Darth Vader was my father! No. No. That's not true. That's impossible! Why? Uh, I don't know. I just didn't think that it was possible. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to Trash Bin. I'm Noah, and uh, this needs a little bit of explanation. So, me and Cole sat down and played Dream Daddy for about 60 minutes or so. And it did not go as expected. So this is a part one of two. This is the part where it's just the result of all the work we've done. This is just the dialogue from the game. No, like, silly interactions. No, nothing like that. Just exactly what happens in the story. And the other episode is however long of just us not taking it seriously at all and messing around. I hope you enjoy them both. It's... Yeah, let's get on to this. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down to the hall of my room, to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear faint sounds, but can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Not the chickens again. Is she dying? I knock gently on the door. The crying immediately stopped. Don't come in right now! Her voice sounds strained, and she sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay, so I open the door and intrude on her privacy. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. I don't want to talk about it. Did, did something happen? No, nothing. Go away! Amanda. Just go off of that. We can just- GET OUT! Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I quickly leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. Little bitch. Wow. What was her so upset? She seemed so fine earlier. She's usually so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she definitely is now. I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I've had a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, I hear her beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey. Bumpkin! What? Can you come here for a second? I There's a moment of silence. Yeah. So. I, I want to talk about what happened the other night. Amanda looks away. What has you so upset? What's going on? I told you. I don't want to talk about it. You've been giving me an attitude lately, and I'd like to know why. It's really... It's none of your business. What happened? Is it something I did? No, Dad. Drop it. Amanda, please just talk to me. I feel like you're drifting away from me. I don't have to tell you everything, though. I'm an adult now. Treat me like one. Amanda, I'm only pressing this because I care about you, and I want you to be okay. If you're not going to tell me, then fine. No matter how much you don't want me to care about your health, your well-being, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm your dad! It's my job! That's all. If you ever decide you want to talk about it, I'm here for you. I, as much as I make you mad, I, I, I love you, my daughter. I reach out and squeeze her. Always. Hmm. Okay. Amanda gets up. I'm gonna go now. I watch, watch. Amanda go into her room and close the door. <laughs> Damien! No, straight to Damien. Forget what we saw there. I just want this really badly. Ever since we had that picnic in the graveyard, Damien and I have been spending a lot of time together. We go on nighttime strolls pretty regularly. He was so impressed with the first letter I wrote him that he insisted we only communicate by post, instead of through dad book. I initially protested, but he gave me one of his old signet rings to use as a seal for my letters, and I couldn't just say no. Oh yeah. Hanging out with the goth dad again? Please, Amanda. You know his name. And yes. Be honest with me here, Pops. Is he actually a vampire? I remember you inviting him to our house that one time, and I've seen Lost Boys, and honestly, I would have preferred trying to see if he could have walked through the threshold of our home without, you know, under his powers.
Yes. Amanda, I have become Damien's familiar. I am compelled. Under his curse, it forces my every waking moment. I'm sorry, sweetie. Dad. Turn into a bat. I don't know. Do it. Ugh. What's the point of being a vampire? You can't turn into a bat. Well, okay, I'm off. Huh. Bye. You're taking a car, you flying in the night, <laughs> leathery wings of a bat. One of those. While I'm out, you can throw away the garlic bread that's in the freezer so I don't die. That would be great. I'm keeping it for insurance, you understand? Right? That's my girl. <laughs> Damien and I walk along the water's edge, chatting. Damien's cape, I mean cloak. He hates it when people call it a cape. Damien's cloak flutters behind him in the breeze. This is gonna seem like a silly question, but why why do goths wear black? Gothic subculture has always been associated with death, you ignorant slut! So it would make sense that the style surrounding it would be greatly influenced by mourning! Interestingly enough, though, was that in the Victorian era, Queen Victoria herself mourned the death of her late husband for ten whole years, wearing black for the rest of her life. If that's not goth, I don't know what it is. I have another question. Uh. Go ahead. How are you so... Sexy. I, I mean, uh, uh, c comfortable with death. You, you mentioned in the graveyard that it helps you appreciate life or something. Well, I have experienced several losses over the course of my life, and I truly believe the only manageable way to cope with it is to accept that death is simply a part of living. Hmm. It's a single universal truth for every human who has ever lived. I am going to die, you are going to die, and life carries on without us. Doesn't that make you feel scared? Not at all. Without the advances of modern science, death was everywhere in the Victorian era, and yet funerals were major social functions. Hmm. Victorians were obsessed with the mementos of their loved ones, even going so far as to take elaborately staged photographs of their dead relatives. The minutia of mourning was so complex that there were set periods of grieving that were deemed acceptable based on who in your life had passed. Now, we don't have any of that if you lose someone. You end up feeling lost yourself because we have no modern equivalent of those formalities. We need to allow ourselves time to grieve, to feel that loss fully, but not allow it to consume us whole. So now, I'm not afraid of death. Hey, don't forget to come back for part two. We talk about eggs.